Today we're going to talk about the channel rack and step sequencer. We're going to start with this little icon here. So if you've entered some steps, hit the piano roll icon, click on any of these. That'll bring up the appropriate channel and you can adjust as such. Of course, once you adjust and lengthen a note or change them up, the piano roll has to stay because the step sequencer can't do what the piano roll can do. I think that's all pretty self-evident. This icon, this is the graph editor. What the graph editor does, it brings up a whole bunch of different parameters that you can control as you go through a pattern. So we're going to talk about all these. Note, that's pretty self-evident. It's the note that you're choosing for that particular sample. VEL, that means velocity. So right now, if we listen to this pattern, fine. So that would be fine tuning. We're probably talking about cents here, which are the divisions in between half steps. So if you listen to the pattern now with the hi-hat, Look at the hint bar up here. It's telling you how many cents. The smallest adjustments are gonna affect it. That's if you want something to change pitch in a very subtle way, or it could be drastic because uh, it seems like the cents go pretty far. Pan, up represents right, and down represents left. X. Now that's referring to mod X in the note properties. If you watch one of my recent videos on 3X OSC, I talked about mod X and mod Y. Mod X being the cutoff of whatever filter you have and mod Y being the resonance. Mod X, once again, is the cutoff. So we have it on low pass. As you go lower in the graph, it's basically moving this knob left. Y, that would be mod Y, and that is the resonance. Resonance, once again, that creates a peak where the cutoff is happening. Bring the cutoff down a little bit. Okay, I'll show you what's gonna happen. We're gonna bring the resonance up. So it's creating a peak at the frequency where the cutoff is happening. Shift, that delays the start of a note. And a lot of these graphs are starting kind of in the middle, but this one actually does start down at the bottom. That would be a terrible mess, but that's a usable feature if the sample is acting funny and isn't timing correctly in your pattern. And the last thing I'll talk about with the graph editor, this little arrow. At the bottom right, you can drag everything so you can get pretty precise. This little box right here, this is the pattern length box. You can run it pretty high, but to see what's actually happening, you have to drag this out a little bit and you can lengthen it or shorten it. And that's how many steps we're dealing with. Next up, we're gonna deal with this. This is the main swing knob. So here's the pattern we have right now. Just a side note, if you've plugged in eighth notes into your step sequencer like this, it 
may be wondering why isn't the swing knob affecting that? I come from a jazz background and eighth notes in general can swing, but as regards FL Studio and swing functionality, it affects 16th notes. That said, if you've plugged in eighth notes and expect them to swing, they're not going to. You have to be choosing 16th notes. So now the main swing knob is obviously going to affect every channel. If you don't want something to be affected, click on it, go to the miscellaneous function tool tab here, and we have swing. That's how much that channel is going to be affected by swing. None. So you do have the option. You can individually per channel defeat the swing that might be applied to the entire channel rack. That said, you could take a couple elements. Go to the main menu here in the channel rack. Set swing mix for selected. In this instance, we want zero. But you have a couple options. It's a little knobby up here. I usually use the space bar for initiating playback, but this little knob will do the same. This is your filter group, so it can help you decide what you're going to be looking at. Once you get a lot of channels going, it can be mind boggling. You can actually set and create filter groups. So one way to do that is, let's say we wanted to create a group, select a couple elements, hit Alt-G. Kick and clap. And then you'd just be looking at the kick and clap. Another way, instead of Alt-G, you could go over here to the main menu and go down and group selected. Alt-G or just hit that. If your step sequencer pattern is really extended and long, there's a little scroll bar right down here. And if you add a ton of channels, there will be one that appears that you can grab. Your plus sign. That's where you can add new stuff. You can just scroll through and add things. Our boxes right here. These are our routing boxes. So it's telling you what insert things are routed to. Over here, we have kind of obvious things. We have mute, you have channel panning left and right, and you have channel volume. Next up is the menu. You can get to the menu with this little arrow. I think most of these selections are kind of obvious, but just in case you didn't know, clone selected. Take any of these and then clone them. It'll create another channel with the same routing. And there are many uses for that, like making subtle alterations to one of the samples. This is just scrolling up and down. You can delete them. You can group them, obviously color them. You can mute. Transpose selected. What that's going to do, it's going to take the things that you selected and actually move them up or down. Get the sound of this in your ear. We're going to transpose selected, maybe by four semitones. You can hear it did get higher. We're going to transpose it back down and you enter a negative value. Assign to free mixer track. These are actually already routed, but if they weren't, actually, what we're going to do, we're going to unroute all of them. Bring the mixer in. We'll make it a little bigger. And now we're going to take all these and assign them to a free mixer track. So you could just click this or you could hit Control L. I'm a fan of keyboard shortcuts, so we'll hit Control L. And now all of these have been routed. Zip and unzip. You may never have used this feature. I used to use it a lot. I don't use it so often, but you can click on it in the menu down here, or you can hit Alt Z, which is what I would usually do. And it zips all of them. To undo that, you would hit Alt U or just hit the unzip and they're unzipped. The other way to do it, if you had them zipped, just right click. The little box will come back up. And most of the other things down here are kind of obvious sizing and things like that. On to this. What happens if I right click a box? More options. If I right click a box, it brings up these options. Now here's kind of a cool thing that you can do. You can fill in a certain number of steps. So fill each step and it'll do it automatically. Fill in four steps. Now, if you didn't know this, you can actually shift this pattern by a step by hitting control shift left or right arrow. A 
that's a really neat way of kind of displacing something that you came up with that might have been lame but could have the opportunity to be cool by just adding an element of randomness to it because you didn't plan that out you're just shifting it and seeing how it sounds one last thing about the right clicking right click and you're going to watch this box over here this is the miscellaneous tools tab over here and it has to do with cutting right click this and hit cut itself now what's going to happen with that which is really neat instead of this waveform bleeding into itself every time it's being played if it's played in a fast repetition if it's cutting itself it's actually starting the sample over rather than having them be overlapped it's really helpful if you have a fast percussion part like this where the sample is very likely to be overlapping okay guys i've saved the coolest for last this thing now if you've been using the channel rack and you've been ignoring this stop ignoring it it's actually a really cool feature and this actually has to do with looping so now we have a pattern listen to the pattern for a moment notice up here we have no kick going on obviously we could just fill in these steps but this is kind of a neat thing click this It'll fill it in for you. If you happen to like what happened, select a channel, right click up here, burn selected channels, and now it just adds it. Pretty good for experimentation, I would argue. Another cool feature is now you have individual looping options for every one of these. If you right click and hit loop all channels, now you have individual selectors. I've added a clap now. Let's say I didn't want that clap to loop. It's a pretty amazing feature. You can come up with some insane things for this. Another option, advanced looping. We're going to make the hi-hat part a little more interesting. And we're going to add this. By changing some of these parameters, you can come up with some cool variations on the fly. Now, don't forget about our control shift left and right when you're in the middle of this kind of thing. They're pretty much infinite options. So, hey guys, I hope that helped you. Hope you're having a good week, and I'll catch you soon. Their full studio 20. 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 Ha <laughs> ha, you thought the video was over. It's not. I have one last tip for you. By the way, that's our beautiful Caton de Tulaire. She's about 13 and has about two teeth left. So she now smiles in a funny way. Okay, so the tip is this. So we have a sample here that we've dragged in from the PAX folder. It's a gospel choir sample. I wrote a simple melody with it. We're going to go to the miscellaneous functions tab. One of the cool things you can do, Porta. What it's going to do for you, it's going to make it so these notes are going to slide together. Off. On. Right now it's really subtle, but if we increase this... off
that can make anything sound cool.